Good morning guys, so this is my Dell XPS 7590. So I purchased this laptop in uh, August of last year, so we're looking at uh, coming up to one year of ownership of this particular laptop. I purchased this as a replacement for my MacBook Pro 15 inch, which I purchased in 2015. As some of you may know, the uh, MacBook range changed after that. They went from having a very nice keyboard with about two millimeters of travel to the very th thin, very uh, very rigid type keyboard that has experienced nothing but issues and literally thousands of replacements being sent by Apple to customers. So one of the main reasons why I wanted this laptop is because after looking into some of the other models and, and laptops available on the market, um, I felt that the keyboard and the, specifically the trackpad is most like the MacBook Pros uh, that I was used to and that I've owned over the last sort of, 10 years. I think this, this laptop is particularly great because of the upgradability. Again, Apple have not allowed you to actually upgrade the storage and memory in their models since 2015. So issues that I've had with this particular laptop, um, I had real problems with trying to get it to boot and I had to get onto the phone to Dell Support where they then sent out an engineer granted the next day. So the Dell engineer found that the issue was actually caused by the motherboard and unfortunately that had to then be replaced. Whilst I thought, great, hey, that's that's fantastic, you know, new motherboard. I happened to notice when the engineer got it out of the box, the, the actual motherboard looked rather old, specifically prominent by the fact that there was a, a little pink heat transfer pad on the motherboard, which sits between the motherboard and the back, the back plate of the laptop so and its job is designed to transfer the heat from the motherboard uh, onto this aluminum back panel but basically I thought I'm gonna have to this is gonna literally eat me away if I don't ask so I asked the engineer excuse me is that a new part thinking that maybe he had made a mistake and maybe he got an old part from his van and tried to replace it uh, into, into my laptop and he said well yeah actually it, it is a replacement part and all of the replacement parts are effectively second-hand replacements that have been fixed. Uh, I think he must have seen the reaction on my face. You know, given that this laptop cost me over £2,000 to buy and certainly therefore in the premium range of laptops, he went on to say that actually all the manufacturers do this in the terms of warranty, that they will use second-hand repaired parts to replace parts in, in your laptop as part of your warranty agreement. So that was super, super, super... Um, annoying upsetting uh really was a kick in the teeth you know i just spent over two thousand pounds on this laptop and such a large part of the laptop is just being replaced by secondhand parts so that really did put a downer on my whole experience of buying a dell laptop for the first time ever so other problems i've had with this laptop uh, when i first purchased it and obviously windows was running on it i had problems with when the when the laptop would go to sleep or wake up from hibernation i noticed that wi-fi networks would, would drop off so wi-fi networks and bluetooth devices would just drop off and they you'd have to manually reconnect them which was you know which was a nightmare uh, having come from macbook where everything just works you know that really was something which i i had a real problem trying to get used to fortunately however in the last sort of three to four months I've noticed some Windows updates must have fixed this problem. I'm certainly not getting this problem anymore and the laptop has been working absolutely fantastic since. Another problem that I've had with this laptop is trying to get OBS to work for screen recording purposes. I've not been able to get OBS to correctly work with this, with this laptop. It's been an absolute nightmare. I've been into the NVIDIA experience application, tried to set uh, specific graphics cards and assign those to the different programs so that they match. But I'm just not getting any uh, output from the screen at all. So screen recording on this laptop for me has been impossible. I've simply used my other desktop computers to achieve screen recording when I needed to. So at the moment I use it for mainly two things. Uh, firstly, the photography and videography stuff. So I use uh, Adobe Creative Cloud and in that suite of applications I use uh, Adobe Photoshop 2020 and Adobe Lightroom Classic. I much prefer the classic version over the over the more modern uh, Lightroom. With regards to the video editing, I'm a massive DaVinci Resolve fan and although I have used Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere on on my old MacBook Pro, um, my heart is now definitely and firmly with DaVinci Resolve. If you're watching this video and you've never tried DaVinci Resolve, I highly recommend you do. Uh, not only is it free, although you can purchase a license, I believe it's for $299. Uh, if you've got a Blackmagic camera, you'll actually get a license free with it as well. 
DaVinci Resolve is fantastic and although like I say you can download it and use it for free um, please support the guys over at Blackmagic. So yeah, so for my video editing stuff I use DaVinci Resolve. From a software engineering point of view and the other things I have on this laptop uh, is I use Visual Studio Code which I think is a fantastic modern uh, lightweight IDE which is great. In addition to uh, Visual Studio which I use for .NET, uh, C Sharp .NET development. So some of the downsides to this laptop that I've personally experienced from a, an external aesthetics point of view, this palm rest does get extremely oily so uh, fingerprints will mark this surface. I know that on other videos as you've probably seen in the past people do comment about grease getting onto this palm rest and that certainly is a real uh, thing. All you have to literally do is damp cloth wipe over it and they're gone. I love this screen. It's like a semi-glossy screen. It very much resembles that of the MacBook Pro and what I'm used to, you know, from the edge to edge display. And I think the clarity and the, and the color correctness of this particular screen is fantastic. So I opted for the 4K touchscreen version of this laptop. Um, you, I could have purchased this in two other versions. The, the full HD version, if I was using this laptop specifically for software development, I would have gone with that option. Not only would you have got extra battery life um, for developing websites, at certainly at this current time, a more common sort of uh, resolution to use and therefore would probably be better. Then you had the other option which was the OLED display, uh, which colors look absolutely fantastic. The range of colors on that OLED display going from the blacks to the very lightest is just breathtaking. However, uh, battery life does suffer more with the OLED display and there was initial concerns about how OLED burning and the screen burning would, would have a potential effect over time. So I decided that what I would do is I would go for the 4K touchscreen version, which for me and what I was doing uh, seemed to be the best sort of middle ground. Uh, I was able to do software development as well as the video and the photography side of things. I'd get sort of true colors from that and and basically I would benefit from the extra battery life and not have to worry in future about potential burning issues with the screen and the OLED display. So over time, how has the laptop fared? Well, to be quite honest with you, um, I've not been. Out, I've not marked it. It's pretty hard to see. I've not marked the, the 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 front or the back really. The laptop is extremely solid. Um, I honestly think it's great. I definitely recommend uh, the Dell XPS range for future buyers and specifically those people who are moving over from Apple uh, MacBook Pros and Apple laptops in general. Dell have actually just released their latest version of this laptop. Uh, it's the 9500 series. However, on that you might you may still be looking to pick up and maybe in the market for one of these laptops. Uh, the benefit of this is it does have more ports. This is a full HDMI port here and in total three USB free USB 3 ports, SD card reader, um, jack, USB-C. So going over to accessories and what I purchased for this laptop. So I have two external power supplies. This laptop uses a 130 watt Dell charger. So the issue that I have when connecting my external Dell widescreen monitor is that although it is a USB-C, the power requirements for this laptop are greater than what the out than what the screen can output. So the problem that we have is that unlike plugging in a MacBook Pro to this particular monitor, um, when plugging in the Dell XPS, because of the high power requirements, I have to plug in a USB-C cable in addition to the external charging brick. When I'm docking it on my desk, I use the Microsoft Surface keyboard and mouse. This is the Precision mouse, which I find fantastic, very very comfortable and well engineered. This is the Microsoft Surface Keyboard um, and again if you're coming from Apple products this really is like the only uh, true alternative that feels very well engineered, very Apple-like. Um, the material on here is magnesium. Um, very very solid, very lovely typing experience. Uh, it does feel like the sort of the Mac, the Apple 2015 style MacBook Pro uh, type keypad. So some of the other upgrades that I made to the Dell XPS 15 is I replaced the supplied 512 gig Toshiba NVMe drive with the Samsung 970 Pro NVMe as well as the supplied 16 gigabytes of RAM. The battery life uh, with the i9 processor is unfortunately rather limiting but what do you expect you know you're you've got one of the most powerful processors that you put in a laptop in that laptop and you know the battery life is going to suffer from that talking about battery life this particular laptop 
I will get about six hours, six to seven hours of light internet browsing, YouTube video watching, and general word processing. On the on the other scale of that, if if I'm looking at doing photo editing, video editing, and development in tools such as Microsoft Visual Studio, I'm looking at more like three hours on battery from a full charge. I noticed yesterday on the Dell website, there's actually 500 pounds off this model at the moment. So if the full size HDMI port and the USB ports were particularly of interest to you, it might be worth going to grab one of those now. So although this laptop does come with the ninth generation Intel i9 processor, it also comes with the same graphics card that's, that's supplied in the newest 9500 series. That is the NVIDIA GTX 1650 Ti. Fantastic card, especially if you are video editing. So wrapping up, I think this laptop is a fantastic alternative to a MacBook Pro. And if you're coming from Apple products, you know that one of the probably one of the most important things, other than the fact of the Unix-based heritage, is that the design aesthetics and the feeling of well-engineered solid product. This laptop certainly gives you that. Whilst you could look at others, and others would probably be in the lines of Lenovo's Carbon X1, um, I've personally found this laptop, specifically the, the keyboard and touchpad, to be second to none as an alternative to the MacBook Pro. Um, so I would definitely, definitely, definitely recommend taking a look at the Dell XPS range if you're looking from switching from Apple laptops to Windows-based laptops. If you're looking to install Linux on this laptop, although I have attempted it and it did work okay, the problem on this particular screen is given that it's 4K and the size of the screen, I had real issues with high DPI and display scaling settings on the Linux desktop. So I tried Ubuntu, I also tried Elementary OS and Fedora. Um, things just weren't consistent and I felt that Mac OS X and Windows operating systems are just miles ahead in terms of desktop scaling. So I promptly switched back to Windows as the primary operating system on this laptop and where I'll definitely stay. So guys, if you like this video, please like it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, well, you know, you can hit the thumbs down as well, but hopefully you did. Please subscribe to my channel for more content and um, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.